would like to welcome him and hand over to him. Pundisi, thank you for, for joining us once again this morning. Over to you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Machaya. Thank you very much for this uh, mm -hmm. wonderful uh, opportunity so that I can speak to the saints. Uh, good morning to all of the saints out there. And uh, may God be a blessing to you this morning as well as we delve into his word. Um, we are again still in the book of Mark. That is chapter 4, verses uh, 35 to 41. I'll read it again in your hearing. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and the other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stand, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke, and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, and let it be so until he comes. Amen. Today, I want us to put a special look on verse 36. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And I'd like to say that yesterday, we were saying that we have been desired by heaven, and we have been sought after and heaven has called us so that we can enter into a partnership with heaven so that we too can be partners in this great work of salvation that has been put forth by the heavenly host. And uh, because of this partnership, we too have a role to play in a work where we do not qualify to actually do the work but because God is gracious and merciful, he invites us to come through, not because we are needed, but because it will be for our own salvation. And today we note that um, as they were crossing over to the other side, the disciples dismiss the people that had gathered and had listened to Jesus throughout the day listening to his sermon, listening to everything, enjoying the words that were coming from the master's mouth himself. And at the end of the day, they are dismissed to go home, dismissed to go and do their business. But even though they were being dismissed, Mark notes that there were some boats that remained. There were some boats that were with them. There were some boats that refused to go home because they were still yearning for the word of God to be in their lives. And I'd like to say this morning that a lot of us, we go onto our pulpits and we preach. And after we have preached, we think that the sermon is over. But at the end of the day, there is a great cloud of witnesses that follows us even after that sermon is over because to them, they still yearn for the word of God. They still yearn for the influence that we're bringing. But if they find us in a position where what we were preaching is not exercised in our lives, then it means that there will be an instant rejection of the message that we have preached on the pulpit. And I'd like to say today, the sermon is not over because we have said amen. We need not just to preach the sermon, but be the sermon in the lives that we live, because there is a great cloud of witnesses that is not dismissed after the amen, that still continues to watch our lives so that they can see that we live 
that which we have preached. And I'd like to say there's a story in KZN where pastors were into a rural area and they were offered some good milk, some creamy milk, but the issue with the pastors was the vessels that the milk was brought in because it looked as though they had a dual nature. The vessels had a usage during the day for serving the milk, but they had another use at night for relieving themselves. And because of that, even though the milk was good, even though the milk was creamy, yet the pastors could not accept the milk because of the dual nature of the vessel. And I'd like to say to us, many people accept our message. Many people love the message of the soon coming Jesus. But at the end of the day, how we conduct ourselves after we have said amen, after we have dispersed the crowd, that is the sermon that deters people from following the message that we have preached. And I'd like to say the days of the sermon on the pulpit are over because the sermon that is preached on the pulpit must be followed up by the sermon that we preach with our own lives. They dismiss the crowd, but there were some boats that were with them. I'd like you to note that Mark mentions that it was even evening time. It wasn't just daytime. It wasn't just the time where people would be fresh and they would be able and conveniently so able to carry on work. But Mark mentions that it was even time after such a long day of preaching, a long day of working, yet Jesus comes through to the disciples and he says to them, let us cross over to the other side. And the disciples, without question, without raising objection, without negotiating with Jesus, the Bible says they took him as he was. And I'd like to say today that we need to take Jesus as he is. We need to take Jesus even when it's not convenient for us. We need to take Jesus even though the time is not a good time to do what he says that we must do. Because at the end of the day, it is his word that we are supposed to trust in. Many feel that because they have received the elevated status of going into partnership with heaven, that they may be in a state where they can negotiate what it is that God is supposed to do. But brothers and sisters, I'd like to say this morning, it is not our part to negotiate with God what it is that needs to be done. But God's word is the word that we're supposed to go with. We're supposed to trust in the word of the Lord. Take Jesus as he is. Take him at his word. One of our hymns say, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. It is not time, just like Isaiah, where we must come and negotiate where we must come and put what we feel should happen. But it is a time when we need to obey, when we need to take Jesus at his word, when we see the turmoil that is happening around, when we see all of the moral degeneration that is happening around us. It is another time for us to negotiate the word of God, but it is a time to take God just as he is, take him, at his word. And I'd like to say to you, my brothers and sisters, many of us feel that because we have been afforded the opportunity of working in the vineyard, then it means that we have a right so that we can come and delay the work of God, delay the opportunities that have been presented in front of us because we feel as though this is not a great opportunity. I'd like to speak to somebody today and I'd like to say that the fact that you have been called into partnership where you do not deserve to be, the fact that you've been called into partnership with a master that is far greater, far holier, far wiser than you are, then working for the Lord is not a right, but it is a special privilege that is offered by heaven itself. And if we look at the work of the God as a privilege that is bestowed upon the lowly that do not deserve, then each and every opportunity to work for the Lord that is presented at our doorstep 
should not be deterred by how we feel, but it should be taken up just as he is, because we know this is a great privilege and not a right for us to work for the Lord. Brothers and sisters, Mark notes that the disciples took Jesus as he was, meaning that they did not hesitate. But the part that really interests me a lot is the fact that um, there were many other boats that were with him. Mark does not say that there were many boats that were with them. Mark does not say there were many other boats that were sailing around them, but Mark says that there were many other boats that were with him. And I looked at this situation and I asked myself, what are you trying to tell us, Mark? I know that when I was still in seminary college, we used to look at this and say that on the other side of Gennesaret, there's only mention of one boat, and that is the boat that was carrying Jesus. But yesterday, as we were looking at this word with my wife and we were praying over it, something came over me and said that these people were not sailing around Jesus, but Mark says there were many other boats that were with him. The reference of him is the master. The reference is to the one that was in charge of the mission. The Bible says there were many other boats that were with him, meaning that if the disciples had felt as though they do not want to do the work, Jesus had other options for carrying him right across to the other side. And I'd like to say today, it is not the vessel that was carrying Jesus that is the only one that had the blessing for the man that was at Gennesaret. But there were many other boats that were with him. Brothers and sisters, this excites me because it lets me know that the statement by Ellen White that says there are a thousand more ways that we do not know anything about that God has in store towards coming to our salvation at his as his people, it means that when heaven organizes itself so that it can become a blessing for us, it does not just come in one blessing. It does not just come with one vessel, but heaven organizes a whole lot of vessels. Heaven organizes a whole lot of boats so that as they come, should this boat fail, there is another thousand, there is another 10,000 that is ready to carry out the mission of God. Therefore, I'd like to say to somebody that is sitting at Kadikena Seret, that is demon possessed, that feels as though they need the help, that your blessing is not on one boat, but many boats are coming your way. And I'd like to say this morning that your blessing can never be stopped by anyone or anything, because Jesus does not come with one plan, but Jesus has a thousand more ways that we know nothing about so that he can come to bless us in our individual situations. And I'd like to say to somebody today, if you're in Gennesaret and you're waiting around, the boats are coming, the boats are coming, the boats are coming your way. And I'd like to say that no man can prevent the blessing that God is about to unleash in your life. You might have been praying, but the boats are coming. You might have been asking God for a solution. And I want to say this morning, the boats are coming. There are many boats with him. Oh, brothers and sisters, I get excited by this part because also there's an innuendo that says that when Jesus returns, there will be a thousand, thousands of hosts coming from heaven. Oh, what a sight it will be when he comes to rescue those that are groaning in this world. We are tired of living in this world. We are tired of the issues that we are going through. We are tired of the death toll. We are tired of the incurable diseases, of the divorces, of the children going wayward, of the churches that are discriminating because of politics. But at the end of the day, God will be our blessing. God will come our way. Jesus will come with a thousand more hosts 
so that we can receive the blessing. Nothing, nothing can block our vessels. Nothing can block our blessing. A lot of people say that Jesus has delayed because we have not preached the message. Please, brothers, don't give me that theology. Nothing, nothing can delay God. For when the time is right, Mikhail will stand and say, it is finished. There is nobody and nothing that can prevent God from coming to rescue his people. And I'd like to say that if we refuse to do the work, there are a thousand more ways that Jesus has lined up so that the work can be finished. And I'd like to say he did not depend upon the disciples taking him across because there were many other boats that were with him. And I'd like to say to you, even if the other boats had refused, Jesus is able to walk upon the waters himself. He does not need to give away the standard, but he gives us an opportunity so that we can serve at his vineyard. And I'd like to say, hold on somebody, hold on because your blessing is on its way. God will not only rescue us and bless us in this world, but he will bless us in our different situations. Hold on, the boats are coming. I want somebody that is busy in a predicament right now, wondering when is God going to answer? I'd like to say that the issue is not the vessel because there are many other boats. Hold on in your situation, trust in God, trust in him. Trust and obey whilst you're waiting for your blessing because there are many boats that are coming. Your blessing is coming. Your blessing is coming. Your blessing is coming. Your blessing is coming. There are many boats that God has at his, at his disposal so that he can come and be a blessing in our lives. May the good Lord bless us. May he strengthen us. May we remain preaching the same sermon even after we have said amen from our pulpits. A lot of people today go on Facebook and they swear at each other. They make all sorts of innuendos. And then when Sabbath morning comes, everyone changes and they say, happy Sabbath, everybody. And people wonder, is this a person that has a relationship with God? The same person that was swearing at us. And I'd like to say that the sermon does not stop. There is a great cloud of witnesses that is watching the sermon that you are preaching. Do not be a dual vessel. You too need to remember that this is a great privilege that we have been afforded by God. May God bless us. May God strengthen us. May God keep us holding on because there are many other boats that are with him. God bless you. Let us pray. Thank you, Father for the gift of your word and thank you for the blessing that you bestow upon us lord thank you for the hope that we receive in you father knowing that you are all wise and all knowing knowing that you know our situations just as it is father we know that the man in Gennesaret could not pray for himself because he was tied down by all of the demonics that were inside of him but because you saw his helplessness you came to his rescue and i'd like to say this morning that please Please, Lord, help our unbelief. Help us to be patient in you. Help us to know that heaven is not lacking opportunity, but heaven has got many ways that it, in which it can solve our situations. Let us learn to trust and obey in you. Let us learn to be still and wait upon you because we know that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not tire. Lord, help our unbelief. We do believe, but please, Lord, help our unbelief so that we can stay stable in our infirmities, knowing that our help is on the way. Lord, today we grab upon the promise of the boats that are with you, the many boats that are with you. And we know, Lord, that the boats are coming. We, you have heard our prayers and the boats are on their way towards our situation. Help our unbelief, help our impatience. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. Ah.